<laughs> Do I have to look at you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Leo Laporte. I am Mr. Twit. I call myself Chief Twit. Biatch. I haven't done that part, but maybe I will someday. And, uh, that sounds like a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Twit, Biatch. Uh, I run uh, the Twit Podcast Network. You know, it's funny, Robert. It's interesting because I never thought of myself as a, as a businessman, let alone an entrepreneur. And uh, yet, in order to control my own life in broadcasting, I had to kind of build my own thing. Yeah. Uh, and so I ended up you started out in radio. having to be a businessman. I started out in radio. That's where we met. As John. you know, you were my chat. You worked in my chat room uh, at KGO. Uh, <laughs> I was on Lafortean. We you were. We we, we, yeah, yeah, we had a secret <laughs> handshake. We had no navels. It was uh, it was fun. Those, that was in the early '90s. Yeah. Um, I've been doing uh, tech talk radio since then. And that led you to go into tech, tech TV? Tech or TV followed. So in the early 90s. ZD, uh, ZD TV? Well, I did, uh, I did a thing you write for. It was ZD TV. Um, and you won they, an Emmy for that, right? Uh, yeah, that, actually, that was MSNBC. That was later. The first thing we did was in 94 for Ziff Davis. And I think they bought airtime on CNBC and stuff. And we, uh, that was with um, Gina Smith. And it was uh, her and me. It was called The Personal Computing Show. Talk about generic. And then later we, uh, uh, we went to MSNBC. Yeah. MSNBC canceled the site. That's what I wanted to for. Canceled the site. And then, uh, and they canceled it partly because Ziff Davis said, oh, by the way, we're going to do a 24-hour tech channel. And MSNBC said, well, all right. Well, I guess we'll see you later. And, uh, and then they did tech TV. And that was great. That was really great. That really launched you into. It was. Yeah. In fact, it's funny. I'm meeting a lot of people, even here, a lot of people, like half a dozen people already, who have said, I'm doing what I'm doing because uh, I, I watched tech TV and it got me excited about technology. There's this guy, Joseph 5.0, have you seen him? Yep. He ran the Tokyo Marathon with cameras all over his body. He came up to me and said, I did this because of you. I said, I'm so sorry. This, was, this wasn't my idea though, I really, but he said, but no, I grew up watching tech TV. And I think we hit, it was 98 to 2004, at a very important time, a lot of the young entrepreneurs here got inspired to get into technology. At that time, they're 12, 13, 14, and they said, this is cool. And I think that's kind of what we were trying to say was, it's because before, prior to that it was kind of geeky, and it was just starting to be cool to be a geek, you know? Yeah. Bill Gates was, and it was kind I of remember making it cool. I showed off NetMeeting for the first time in public Net on Tech TV, that's right. and we couldn't get to work until literally 15 seconds before airtime. You know, There's nothing like live TV. I was I was so nervous. Uh, you know, we couldn't get it to work, and it worked right before airtime. That That's why I had this huge smile on my face. Yeah. It was like you, you felt it good. Works. It worked. <laughs> and that was one of the mo one of the things I really learned at Tech TV was live is best. Yeah. It's more authentic. It's real. It, it scares the hell out of people. But that's okay too, because that brings an energy level to the show that makes it more fun. And there's no cuts. There's no, you know, the thing that that kills you in broadcasting uh, is, let's do that again. Yeah. Well, let's do that again. Just kills the energy. Kills the yeah. energy. And, and can I, we do that again? Bro? Yeah. <laughs> Take two. And uh, and I love it. I yeah. love spontaneity. And and you know what? It turns out that of course this smart, con you know, connected internet, connected audience yeah. knows real from phony, yeah. and they want real. So the timing is perfect for me to do the kinds of stuff I do. Well, and I've always believed that they wanted depth too, because if you're going to explain Node.js in two minutes on CNN, yeah, forget first it. of all, it wouldn't even get on CNN because right. it's not important enough yet. But you can't go into any depth. You can't explain even what it is. In two I remember, minutes. you know, when we were doing the site for MSNBC, and I wanted to talk about Java. We had Kim Palese yeah. on to talk about Java, and they said, no, 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 you can't do Java. Uh, nobody will understand it, and they wanted to really dumb it down. Uh, actually, they were very confused because then Andy Lack, who was the president of uh, NBC News at the time, came by and said, make it this much smarter. So, which I don't know how much, what is that like? I don't know what, how much smarter is that? But, but that was, they, they knew they were dumbing it down too much, but then they didn't want to make it too smart because it would exactly. So all we do on Twit is it's for enthusiasts. If you don't get it, that's fine. Keep watching, you'll get it eventually. Uh, treating the audience as intelligent is, is anathema to mainstream broadcasting, but it's exactly what we do. And guess who's going to win? A lot of people ask me, how do I become Scoble, or how do I become Leo Laporte? What, what would a 20-year-old Leo Laporte do now? You know, you know, I don't know about what, Leo Laporte, but I can tell, because I, I can't see me as well as you can, <laughs> but I can see you, and I can tell you what makes a Scoble a Scoble, it's probably true of me too, is enthusiasm, yeah. and, and passion for what's going on, and the desire, I think you and I share this to tell that story, 
to the rest of the world. Look, this is amazing, look what's happening. This is an incredible thing. This is something you can use. This is something that's changing the world. The, you know, um, we see it, we're fortunate because we get ringside seats to the revolution. And so our job, which I love, is to you know, be at the revolution, not be necessarily too much participants, but be at the revolution and then say to people, can you believe what's happening? You've got to find out about this. And I think people really love that idea that we can bring them in and give them ringside seats to something that is, this kind of transformation happens only every few hundred years at best. So we are so fortunate to be watching this happen right now. Yeah. I, my advice is find a niche that you can focus on and own because I can't, I can't be the Node.js guy. Right. I, I can talk about that for an hour a month. You know, I right. can't do it, and probably the same for you. Well, you can talk about it absolutely. for 15 minutes and, on Twitter. And the way you do it is by finding out what you love. Yeah. Your niche is what you love. Don't pick a niche, somebody else's niche. Pick your niche. Yeah. And so everybody has a niche that they love, and so that's the niche you should do. Yeah. You and I are a little bit more generalists probably than we would necessarily recommend. Um, you know, no, you can grow into being a journalist. You right? can. If you become the start, JS guy, start somewhere. Then you become yeah. the social media guy. Then you become this guy, and then right. then all of a sudden, ten years later, you you have a family of niches. But I should say, it's okay to follow your enthusiasm. It's okay to follow your bliss and to do what you really love. People, I think we live in a society. America is a little different than maybe say some of the uh, older cultures here in Europe. But even in America, we live in a society where it's just kind of considered indulgent to follow your bliss. It's yeah. not, it's the only thing to do, do it. Let's talk about Europe. What, what are you seeing, on, uh, have you seen it? Oh, yeah, there's a real here? transformation, and you've been here a few years. This yeah. is my second or third, second year here. Uh, I, I've, this is my third year in uh, Paris for Christmas. I mean, come here a lot. And there is absolutely a real fertile growth happening here. This, has, this conference is a perfect example. It's really become much more so the conference to be at. Uh, not just in Europe, globally, yeah. uh, for entrepreneurship. There's a, there's a lot of great stuff going on, and I see a lot of very exciting innovation. You know, as the economy in Europe struggles, and it's really struggling, well, you, you and I, we went to see uh, President Sarkozy talk about this last night. Yeah. Um, you know, they are in a financial crisis, yeah. and they see uh, the tech industry as being one of the ways they can bail themselves out. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a way of creating value at very low cost, it uses the brains of a society, the young people of the society. It's, it's not an auto industry that takes years and tons of capital to build. It's something that can happen right now. So these economies are really looking to tech to save them. Yeah. So I think there's this great time, and to, especially in Europe, to be an entrepreneur. I, this year I'm really seeing a lot of social companies. I, in fact, I'm just about to interview a couple guys who are building on Foursquare and social games and all sorts of interesting um, an analytics companies that are uh, trying to do There's machine learning. There's a lot of me too though. You got to see, you know, the, they, these, these people watch Foursquare work and they say, yeah. well, how can we do this and slice it differently yeah. and stuff. So, I mean, I think that's fine. I think you get, we but all get in this mode. But some things, yeah. right? Yeah, you, you copy people is a good thing, a good way to These start. These copies are bootstrapped on top. On know? top of, yeah. Yeah, like a Foursquare game. It, it, it's, uh, well, we'll see it in a little while, but. I'm, I'd like to see some more innovative uh, uh, stuff. You know, the thing that I'm exci most excited, two things that are most exciting here are not European, but they're American, is Flipboard, the new iPhone app, which is incredible, and Dave Morin's Path 2.0, which, could, you know, Path, was one of those crash and burn exercises that everybody used for one day and it died immediately. I didn't like the idea because I said, 50 friends, what's the point of that? I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, and then he came back with Path 2.0 last week and I can't stop using it. Me and neither. so, what, oh, you, you, you finally got the, the Path. All right, that's because you were asking me. I don't get it, I don't get it, I don't get it. So I think- So they raised it at 150 and they put a really beautiful design and they made it about journaling your own life. So it works even if you don't have any friends, right? There's a, In there's fact, a reason you to can, do it. You can, not sh you can put something on a path that you share with no one, the yeah. only you can see. And I asked Dave, I said, uh, what, what's the point of that? I don't understand. He said, because this is your life story, this is your journal, you might write something that's personal that you only you want to remember. Yeah. I said, oh, that's interesting. Now there's some issues, as with all this stuff, okay, but it exists on my iPhone, can I export this? <laughs> Can, you know, they've got to give us an API. I would like to be able to put this on my WordPress blog and store everything there. I'm sure they'll, I hope they'll do something like that. Yeah. Uh, in the meanwhile, hey, we're, we are building this beautiful thing on our mobile devices that is a timeline. It's just like Facebook's timeline. Yeah. Anyway, I think there's a lot of good stuff. I hate to see, uh, you know, if social becomes the hot word of the moment, that everybody says, I'm doing social. 
Um, and that's okay. I understand that. No, but, but there's let's find the some social new stuff. The social data streams are going like this, right? Uh, Twitter is now doing 250 million tweets a right. day. Right. A quarter billion tweets a day, and it's doubling every seven months. Well, that doesn't mean you can't build on Twitter. I think Flipboard's a really good example. Yeah. They took the social signal uh, and the informational signal from Twitter and reimagined it. So they built yeah. on Twitter, but they did something completely innovative based on Twitter. Yeah. In fact, they used Twitter in a way that probably even Ev and, and Jack didn't imagine. No. And, and they actually took Twitter to another level, if you ask me. Yeah. So yeah, it's possible to stand on somebody else's shoulders and still be innovative. I'm just saying, be innovative. Let's see something new. Let's not see yeah. version eight of Foursquare or yet another, you know. But what I'm seeing here in Europe is some of the uh, computer science guys doing research, trying to find something that's innovative, trying to do the machine learning that'll find a new pattern. I like that'll that. Enable a new company to be built. There's a great university culture in Europe that we have less of in the United States, where there's a real celebration of intellectuals, especially in France. Yeah. And uh, so it's interesting to see a different cultural slant on uh, technology, but that's what you need. Innovation comes from unique perspectives. So coming here and getting a slightly different, a skewed perspective is great. Yeah. I could talk to you for hours and a half. It's exciting. <laughs> I know. You know, I, I know you, you better than anybody, and it's great to see you. And, Always fun to run into. It's so funny, you come to the web and you see all the people you know yeah. from San Francisco. <laughs> but it, then you see a lot of people that you've never met. It, it's really That fun. was something that um, uh, Eric Schmidt last night talked about, that Silicon Valley needs a competitor. Yes. Right? Um, and I think one will come out of China maybe, like Beijing. Absolutely. Or maybe Tel Aviv. Or well, maybe we know London, that. Some or, of the best stuff that's done right now is being done in Israel. You know that. Um, and you know, Fran it should be France, it should be everywhere. Competition is good for everybody. And it's great to hear somebody like Eric who, sh who could say, we made it, we're big, don't, don't mess with us, we're number one, baby. Instead, say the right thing, which is give us some competition, challenge us. That's the right, that's the right attitude for any entrepreneur. Challenge me. Thanks, Robert. I have to go to work now. The Chief Twit. You have a good studio here. This is where I want to work next year.